Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk briefly about creating a heat map um, between two different terrain models. So being able to visualize those elevation differences between two terrain models in Open Roads Designer. Uh, we're going to be able to do that by using a couple different tools and visualization techniques inside Open Roads Designer, uh, and one of them being a delta terrain model. Uh, so we're going to be creating a delta terrain model uh, between our two terrains that we have uh, in this example. Um, so I just have some testing data, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the file setup that I've already uh, done for this. Uh, I have a KD file in which I have my terrains imported uh, in. So I happen to have a land XML and a TIN file that I happen to import into my KD001 file. I did set them to different feature definitions, so I'm going to be able to, to kind of visualize them uh, differently. I could turn them on and off separately, um, but I, I wanted to make sure that uh, I talked a little bit about that just because we don't necessarily need to have them all in the exact same file or actually do the computations inside the file that the terrain models are housed. In this case, I recommend using a separate file, which is I've created a KD002, in which we're going to actually create the delta terrain uh, model inside of. So you can have conventionally collected data inside a field book with a terrain model created. Uh, you can have terrain model created from a point cloud outside of there and have that in a separate file and reference those all into one in which we're going to do that delta terrain. So I have my KD002 open and I have referenced in my KD001. So if I look at my reference dialog here, I have my KD001 uh, referenced in, and I have a couple terrain models uh, inside of here. Uh, you'll notice they are of varying sizes, and we're going to talk a little bit about how the tool handles that uh, here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on an area in which I'm kind of curious about. So maybe over here in this intersection, we want to see kind of some of the changes in that terrain and compare them to each other. The concept behind creating a delta terrain model is that it's going to basically create a terrain model that has elevation points that is the difference between the elevation of the two surfaces. So if we have uh, core, or elevations of our terrain models are maybe near the 900s uh, of feet, feet in elevation and the difference between those elevations is maybe a tenth, we're going to create a terrain model that is has an elevation of a tenth at that particular x, y, or northing, easting coordinate. So in this case, that's why I recommend having this in a separate file. These are all 3D files, because uh, we're going to be creating those terrain models and things inside of them. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and get started with the tool. Uh, so if I'm looking uh, inside uh, my survey workflow, the terrain tab, under this additional methods, there's a create delta uh, tool that we can bring from the, the drop down there. Um, if we also type this inside our search dialog, uh, we can see that it is in a bunch of different places as well. That just happens to be one of the places I remember off the top of my head. Um, so uh, another great uh, tool that we can use is that search menu to be able to find some of the tools, as long as we know the name of it. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the Create ter uh, Delta Terrain Model tool. And there's a couple different delta methods that we can use. We can do a terrain model to a plane or a terrain model to terrain model. So in this case, we're going to be using a terrain model to terrain model. And uh, we can go ahead and do a left click to accept that. And we're going to go ahead and walk through the prompts and selecting our terrain model. So we're going to locate the first terrain model, which I'm going to use as my overall terrain, uh, my larger terrain model. Um, and it really just depends on the direction that you want to see these elevation changes. If you want to see them a positive or negative, uh, the order in which you select those might be um, might be beneficial to you. Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to use zero offsets for both of our terrain models because we want to see them at their selected uh, surface. So if we, we could do an offset and start to see some differences there as well if we wanted to. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, left click to accept that and select my second terrain model, which will be my smaller, uh, smaller terrain model there with my feature definition set to triangles. Um, I think that's feature definition two existing triangles. I'm going to also do a left click to accept that vertical offset of two, and it's going to go ahead and create my delta terrain model. Um, so it's going to create that inside this file. So we actually haven't created anything until we inside this particular file besides the reference of our two terrain models. 
So as it goes through, it's looking at each of those terrain models, subtracting the elevations for each of those northern eastern coordinates, and creating a, a TIN network for that. You'll notice I did not set a feature definition. Um, you could set a feature definition if you wanted to be able to turn this on and off as a reference inside other files a little bit easier. Um, but in this case, I just kept it as no feature definition because we're really looking at the visualization techniques using the thematic mapping in our view settings. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of those settings and how we can change those inside our file. So I'm going to go ahead and close my Delta Terrain Model uh, toolbar there and open my Reference Manager again and just turn off that reference for uh, visualization so we can see the Delta Terrain Model. And you'll notice that the terrain model was only created in places where both uh, terrain models overlapped. Um, so it is going to be clipped to that smallest uh, terrain model that we have. Um, so that, that's one thing to, to keep in mind. Um, now that we have our terrain model in here, let's go ahead and visualize uh, some elevation differences. So we can go ahead under our view attributes. I happen to be working in view one. We're going to change our display style from wireframe to thematic height. And in doing that, it's going to go ahead and create a elevation difference uh, map, but like heat map for our particular file. And it set some, uh, some height differences uh, for our file automatically. And it is saved based off of that, that file itself. So we can see that we do have some elevation differences in here, um, probably right around uh, uh, three-tenths or so um, above the surface. Uh, there are some areas, of course, that overlap and match really well. And we also have some areas of gray, so that's outside of our range. We can adjust this by going into our view attributes in the display style. And if we click on the three little dots over here, um, I think it's called an ellipses, uh, we can open our display styles uh, dialog. Under the thematic display, we're in the height model right now. We can go ahead and edit that change uh, if we wanted to. So maybe we want this to be able to see um, negative one foot to a foot difference. And it's going to go ahead and, and section that off. And we can also do some changes as well. Uh, maybe we want to see uh, some different regions uh, and pick some different coloring, uh, different schemes uh, as well. Um, so it's really up to, up to you on what you want to be able to see. Uh, so you can do some customs uh, and things like that. So I like to visualize, th visualize things in the blue to red. Um, and it also puts that, that nice uh, ledge in there so you can kind of see those differences. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, accept these. Uh, and we can see if that helped our terrain model a little bit. We can see that we do have some areas that are still over that one foot uh, in one foot limit. So we might have to bump that up if we wanted to see that. Or we could just keep that as that gray color to know that our terrain models have a large difference in that area. Um, so it's a, it's a nice tool to be able to, to visualize and see those different changes. We could see over here on our pavement, we have some areas where we might have some differences. Um, so a great way to, to visualize the, the differences between different terrain models.